Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. This is the Bloomberg Daybreak Europe podcast available every morning on Apple, Spotify or wherever you listen. It's Tuesday the 11th of June here in London and I'm Caroline Hepke. Coming up today, Rishi Sunak faces a last minute revolt from Tories over a lack of big ticket manifesto tax cuts. Polls suggest Marine Le Pen's far-right party has a sizeable lead ahead of the French legislative elections. Plus, making a smart move, Apple brings chat GPT to iPhones as Elon Musk warns that he may ban the first devices. Let's start with a roundup of our top stories. Rishi Sunak's cabinet have been lobbying him to add last minute big ticket tax cuts to his election manifesto, which is being published today. One of Sunak's own party has seen the document and described it to Bloomberg as long, dense and lacking a retail offer. Reports suggest that the Conservatives are promising to cut a suite of taxes, including a 2p cut on national insurance. In an interview with the BBC, Rishi Sunak acknowledged that his government had taken the tax burden in the UK to the highest level since the last World War. I'm not going to shy away from what happened. I did make those difficult decisions because that's right for the financial security of our country. But now taxes are being cut. The average tax rate faced by a typical person in work is the lowest it has been in over half a century. So yes, you're right about the overall tax burden. But for someone in work, an ordinary average worker today, they face the lowest average tax rate that they have faced in over half a century. There is frustration, however, that Sunak appears set on proposing a third national insurance cut after two at the last two fiscal events, which failed to move opinion polls. Meanwhile, the Liberal Democrats started the week of manifesto launches with a promise to tax banks in order to fund care. Banks, all producers and tech giants would face higher taxes as the party plans to raise a total of £26.9 billion a year by 2028 to 2029. The party leader, Ed Davey, says that he will use the money to repair the damage caused by the previous government. After years of conservative chaos and neglect, we are putting forward a bold, ambitious and fully costed plan to tackle the health and care crisis from top to bottom. The Liberal Democrat leader has built his campaign around attention-grabbing stunts, a Lib Dem staple, combined with poignant videos about caring for his disabled son. Though it's unlikely that the traditional third party in British politics will be able to implement their idea, they could win enough seats to influence who forms the next government if the election is close. Meanwhile, a poll in France puts Marine Le Pen's national rally at 34% of voting intentions in the first round of the upcoming French legislative elections. That's compared with 19% for President Emmanuel Macron's ruling party. This in an online poll by Toluna Harris Interactive for Challenges MC St RTL in France. Macron's surprise announcement of a snap election followed from his party's defeat in the European parliamentary elections. There are two rounds of voting due to take place on the 30th of June and the 7th of July. Bill Gross has told Bloomberg that Europe is the place to look for opportunities now. His assessment came in the aftermath of the election results that showed a rightward shift by the region's voters. The news shook markets with the announcement of a snap election by Macron sending French bond yields to their highest levels this year. But the co-founder and former chief investment officer at PIMCO says that creates opportunity. I think in terms of an attraction, German 10-year boons and French oats, the 10-year there, uh, their spreads have narrowed significantly in the past month or two relative to treasuries um, and today as well by 8 or uh, 10 basis points. So there's, there's coming a point where European bonds are more attractive than treasury bonds in my opinion. According to Bill Gross, the recent market reaction to other elections in Mexico, India and South Africa also offer a guide for how the US campaign might impact assets come November. 
Christine Lagarde is warning that last week's rate cut may not be followed by further rapid moves. In a newspaper interview, the European Central Bank president cautioned that rates are not on a, quote, linear declining path. The comments come after last Thursday's widely anticipated rate reduction, which came despite stronger than expected wage growth and consumer prices. Inflation across the eurozone accelerated by more than anticipated in May, rising by 2.6% year on year. And just lastly, Apple has announced a raft of new artificial intelligence features as the tech giant pick up ground on rivals. Dubbed Apple Intelligence, the platform includes a partnership with OpenAI's ChatGPT. The firm says that its AI offering will help summarise text, create images and retrieve relevant data for users. Here is Bloomberg's chief correspondent, Mark Gurman. I think there were a lot of expectations. I think that Apple met the expectations. I think that Wall Street had put a lot of pressure on Apple to deliver a suite of new AI features, and Apple did just that. There's nothing here that leapfrogs the competition. There's nowhere here where Apple now can claim that it is the best, right? Typically when Apple is this late to the party, it comes in with the best outfit. That didn't happen this time around, right? It came in uh, with a Me Too set of initiatives here for AI, differentiated by really deep integration and a focus on features that it believes consumers can use on a day-to-day basis. But there's nothing here that's a breakthrough. As Mark Gurman notes, the announcement at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference was met with a tepid reaction by investors, with shares down by almost 2%. There was also a swift reaction from Elon Musk. The Tesla boss says that he would ban Apple devices from his companies if OpenAI software is integrated at the OS level, calling the tie-up a security risk. Now, in a moment, we're going to be talking a bit more about Apple, OpenAI, ChatGPT, and also about UK politics ahead of the Labour data that we get out later this morning. But first, food. This is the best story on the Bloomberg Terminal and written uh, by my friend Kate Crader, um, who has frankly the best job in the building. The best restaurants in the UK. Uh, it's a list of what's been announced uh, overnight. Apparently, the top honour goes to the Ledbury. Perhaps no surprise there. The Australian born uh, chef Brett Graham is is now the number one restaurant. This according to the UK's National Restaurant Awards. £225 dinner, but apparently the thing that has captured everybody is that they have a glass uh, box where they grow special mushrooms and therefore the main dish of that menu apparently is called Mushrooms from the Cabinet. Rather nice. Number two, if you're looking for a restaurant booking over the weekend, it's Mountain near Oxford Circus. This is a Bask-inspired restaurant. Uh, Lots more to read all about the best places if you're uh, for your f- uh, f- whatever your foodie heart might desire on the Bloomberg terminal this morning it's also on the bloomberg.co.uk website I love a restaurant review myself right let's get to the politics now though uh, Rishi Sunak facing last minute calls by cabinet ministers to add a new tax cut or, or specific retail offer as it's called uh, and also tougher migration policy to the conservative manifesto after an early draft provoked quite a lot of disquiet we're joined now by Bloomberg's UK correspondent Lizzie Burden. Good morning, Lizzie. In terms of the manifestos, this is manifesto week. The general election is on the 4th of July. In terms of the Conservative manifesto that is expected out later today, already rumblings of dissatisfaction. Yeah, I know I say this every time I see you, Caroline, but this is one of the Prime Minister's last chances oh, really okay. to close that gap in the opinion polls before the election and nothing seems to have worked so far. He appears to be losing votes to Labour on the left and reform on the right. Reform, of course, led by Nigel Farage, who, let's not forget, Caroline, brought down both Sunak's predecessors, David Cameron and Theresa May. So Mm. we understand there are going to be various tax cuts on offer, including a stamp duty cut for first time buyers, a two percentage point cut to national insurance, the payroll tax, of course. But the trouble is, like that surprise election announcement, the drafting of this manifesto appears to have been a close guarded operation among Sunak's top aides and outside that circle as you say there is a worry that Sunak isn't going far enough by cutting inheritance tax for example and cutting national insurance for a third time when it hasn't moved the polls the last two times so to paraphrase one Tory aide that is the definition of insanity but obviously as bond traders know If Sunak goes too far with unfunded tax cuts, it would be the same with Labour spending plans. He risks comparisons to Liz Truss. Uh, Okay, so that 
uh, for the Conservatives. In terms of Liberal Democrats, the manifesto out yesterday, what did they announce? So they've pledged to tax the rich as well as frequent business flyers and banks notably as well, all to fund a £10 billion nearly package for social care and the National Health Service. So the other interesting thing as well is they've reiterated this long-standing policy to try to rejoin the EU single market. So the Lib Dems, the other threat to Sunak, I've talked about the left and the right, this is the threat from the south, but they're not likely to be the next government, Caroline. The no. point is they could win enough seats to influence who forms the next government if the election is as close as it was back in 2010 or 2017. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty faint hope if you look at the polling right now, isn't it? But OK. And um, what about the uh, other things that we're thinking about for the UK today? Of course, away from the politics, actually about the jobs data, 7 a.m. What does it mean for the Bank of England uh, and, and for workers? Well, this is probably likely to be for the Bank of England uncomfortable reading, but not uncomfortable enough to stop them cutting interest rates. So just like in the Euro area, the expectation is that wage growth is going to be sticky, even if there is slower wage growth down the line. The number we're looking for today is 6.1% in wage growth for three months to April. April, of course, being the month when the minimum wage jumped almost 10%. Mm. In terms of Bank of England rate cuts, our economists reckon the first will come in August, June basically off the table because of the election. And then if you look at the market pricing, investors are only fully pricing in the first cut in November. They've already cut the odds of June and August. So it'll be interesting to see whether this number actually moves that pricing when we get the numbers at 7am and the pricing at 7.30. Yeah, OK, fantastic. Uh, well, of course, you'll be back with us in the 7am hour in order to discuss all of that. Bloomberg's UK correspondent, Lizzie Burden, thank you so much for being with me uh, this morning. So uh, let's also think about Apple then. Apple has unwrapped its long-awaited suite of new AI features, including a partnership with OpenAI, the maker of chat GPT, the iPhone um, maker is betting that a personalised and understated approach to the technology will win over customers. Quite high stakes. Joining us now is Bloomberg Intelligence's Matt Bloxham to discuss. Uh, good to have you with me in the studio. Apple integrating chat GPT. Just explain how it's going to work. Yeah, so, I mean, there are lots of AI features, but, you right. know, the, the example here would be that you know, if you're using um, their Safari, which is their web browser, to uh, search for something, it'll bring a pop-up that says, would you like us to use ChatGPT to to kind of enhance this query. Yes. And if you say yes, it will send it off to ChatGPT and ChatGPT will come back with a more, kind of more curated response rather than just, you know, a list of websites. You know, for example, if you, I mean, one of the examples I gave was like cooking some dinner with some ingredients. Like, you know, typically what would happen if you put that into like Safari, it come back with a, you know, a list of links to websites that have sure. recipes would come back with chat gpt of like here is a recipe for something you know that kind of combines all these ingredients together that you might find delicious so it's but i can you know the, the critical point here um is that it's an opt-in so they're not right they're not kind of automatically sending you to chat gpt um they're giving the option to enhance the generative ai uh, response with it uh at, yep Overall, how impressive is it? And the other thing that we should note is that this suite of AI mm -hmm. tools is not actually coming in until later on this year. So how, how kind of blown away were you by it? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you're right that some of these features are going to come out later, including the, the, uh, the chat GPT integration. Um, you know, overall, this is an incredibly slick, well thought out set of tools. And, and the vast majority of it is Apple's own uh, generative AI technology. Things mm. like the chat GPT connection is an enhancement on top of that. You know, it's integrate, if you're an Apple user, you're going to find this integrated seamlessly into all of the tools you, you typically use and very familiar with. So from messaging to email to notes to Safari uh, to your, your photos, you know, so you're going to just find that those those apps now just do more and, and help you yeah. yeah and particularly like siri you know that they're kind of interactive voice assistant you know that's going to be more sophisticated in how it helps you to kind of find things on your device mm. um you know things like prompting a reply to a text message or an email and allowing you to kind of recut them you know according to different kind of styles um all this stuff is kind okay. of the apple technology so you know it, it's very slick OK, slick. But then the criticism from Elon Musk. I mean, mm. very swift to yes. sort of 
criticised. There was quite a lot of back and forth about the criticisms that he had. He says he won't have Apple devices in his companies. Basically, he's concerned about the privacy risk. Yeah, so I, he he was kind of pointing out if if um, if the chat GPT system is integrated fully into the operating system level, he would be very concerned yeah about the overall security and privacy risks of, of that because yeah I mean he's got a um, a long standing kind of tension with mm. uh, OpenAI. He's got his own rival uh, platform coming out, so you know I, I think it's unclear whether actually the way that Apple have set this up. Um, is reflective of his concerns but you know I think it's an opportunistic commentary just to kind of share his views on you know what's a kind of big topic for the day. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, your morning brief on the stories making news from London to Wall Street and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed every morning on Apple, Spotify and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning on London DAB Radio, the Bloomberg Business app and Bloomberg.com. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say, Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. I'm Caroline Hepke. And I'm Stephen Carroll. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day, right here on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe.